Hi guys, it's Tao from Shine Bright Design and today I'm doing a chameleon markers demonstration. This is my first time uh, using the chameleon markers by the way. So this is a complete raw footage of my first impressions of it, my first, um, my first undertaking of it and how I'm handling adapting to this new technique. So if you guys know, chameleon markers work very different to normal markers such as Copic markers, etc. I did a little demonstration, a little practice test before on how it works. And to me, it's all about timing and um, and this basically is just about making sure you have the same timing throughout if you want consistent uh, colouring across the whole thing. Now the longer you hold it in the uh, blending chamber, the more of the gradient look you will have here. Um, this was done on just normal computer paper, but I'm sure on this type of paper it will appear much nicer. Now this piece is from um, Fine Art Colouring Rapture and it's one of my books that I've done a flip through in, so I'll put a description below with a link to that. Um, I think this is a very sweet piece and it's got a lot of intricate areas and details where we can actually demonstrate this gradient. So I'm just going to wing it and we're going to see how it goes. All right. So I feel like I want to use a lot of green foliage first and then we'll just see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start towards the bottom. I'm going to zoom in so I can show you guys close up. And this is probably going to be a, a real time tutorial. If not, I may speed it up. So most probably what I'm going to do after this is I'm going to start colouring and doing a demonstration. I'll probably pause and have a segment of little breaks where I kind of talk about how I feel um, at certain stages about the product and then I'll just keep speeding up as I go. So it won't be such a long video so I'll probably do um, kind of a chit chat, speed up tutorial or speed up demo chit chat about how the progress is going, my feedback and so and so so forth. Okay? So I hope you guys enjoy and just come along the ride.
Hey guys, it's Tao, and to give you my final, I guess, review on these products, the Chameleon Markers are not something that I would say a beginner can pick up. It takes a while for you to kind of figure, learn about the product, how to use it, and a lot of practice before you actually start understanding how you can use it in your own style. So it took me a while to actually get this and kind of work it into my style of Color. Now the thing about this marker is that um, it really is focused on the idea of gravity. So when you're using the blending chamber, you actually really have to um, attach it and hold it vertically so that gravity pushes the blending solution into the color pigment and that's how it works. What you need to be careful is um, your time, don't leave it too long, and don't turn and always keep it um, vertical, and don't do it the opposite way around where the the pigment is going into the blending chamber. You don't want to do that because that means the ink from the pigment is going into that chamber, and then you'd have to turn it upside down for it to reverse into the pigment again. Um, for 52 markers and the cost, it is very pricey. Uh, the product itself feels really high class. The packaging could do with some improvement. I find it very annoying um, in the way it's designed. I can understand why it's designed the way it is. Um, the standing, if I can just show you here, the standing, um, the way it's packaged is it, it needs to be stand up and it's already tiered as well so you're going to be able to choose the colors very easily and that's really great and and all but I just feel like there could be another way of designing it maybe similar to how Faber Castell has done their pit, pit pen markers very much you can you can very much follow this whole time-based um, thing when it comes to doing the gradient chamber you can definitely have a, like a egg timer or a little sand hourglass and just flip it every time so you can have a consistent timing therefore you would have consistent gradients but the thing is that depending on what type of coloring you're doing for example this, this is quite intricate it's not going to always be the same and a lot of the time you have to follow your instinct so that's what I'm saying, it's not a beginner's tool it's very much someone who has to understand the product and kind of have an instinct and foresight to see how things are turning. Uh, for example, you would have seen in my video that the gradients don't always color the same and you just have to time it so that it matches up. If it was a circle or if it was a square, it would be very easy, but when it comes to certain things like very tiny things, things that overlap each other, it's going to be very complicated to, for you to colour. So this is why I'm saying it's not the most beginner, amateur type of tool. If you're, a, if you're a professional, if you have time to sit down and play with this like I have, then you can understand how to use it. But it does take time. And the way that most people are using this is they're going from the light to dark um, colouring. For me, it looked too plain for me. It looked too um, it like it was missing something. So what I did was I overlapped it with flat color as well. You can use copy markers with this with this marker as well, um, but I did use just the flat color, no gradient. And for example, you would see in the video, I would have done like a clear to pigmented um, gradient, and then I would have gone in with a flat yellow. So that's how I've used it. I've done it here, specifically on the roof and in the buildings so it's very much it's really clear for you to see there I think that's a great way to use it um, in terms of tiny detail uh, this is not really something that I would use for tiny tiny detail I tried using it with leaves and stuff but to me I think it's most effective with a wider space I haven't done skin with this and I don't know if I want to because it's quite scary I think someone who is very professional with using m manga style would would be more beneficial to look at um, in terms of how to use these markers with skin. But in terms of like colouring in general, I think this is something for a landscape or a big blocked type of uh, colouring. 
definitely not something for Mandala. Um, Mandala? Is that how you say it? <laughs> but it's not something for that. It's not something for Johanna Basford colouring books either because they're very intricate and small. You do have dual tips where it's the brush tip and the fatter tip. But it's it's not something, these markers aren't made for fine detail. I always recommend you guys to use fine tip markers, um, fine tip uh, felt tips even, for finer details because you don't want to go beyond the line. I do think these gradient markers are wonderful when it comes to large space, if you want to create that gradient. And I think they're wonderful. I think the colour the color palette of this 52 set is very nice as well and I think it's it's a great product it has a lot of improvement though in terms of packaging um, in terms of the formula as well in terms of formula I do believe that Copic is better but this is still a great product um, of course you always pick Copic markers because they're very high quality um, but the Copic markers don't have this type of technology. Uh, but it is very, it is decent ink. It uh, it applies to paper very nicely, very smooth. It's not patchy in some cases. Um, it really depends on your application when you do the grade. Hi guys, so you would have seen a demonstration on this piece just now. This is a piece from Fine Art. Colouring, and this is Rapture, the um, book that I got. I did a colouring flip through on this ages ago as well, so I will put that in the description box below. So the demonstration you would have just seen speed up, I think, uh, would have demonstrated the technology that is in the Chameleon markers as you see here. It took me a while to actually understand the technology and understand how I could use it with my style. And the way that I started using it in the beginning you'll see that it doesn't seem as fluid as I usually colour. And over time I realised that it was it was the colours and what I did was I overlaid colours on top. So you'll see me using the gradiated um, technology on the pieces and then also on top a flat colour of marker. These markers are really nice. The ink is very nice quality. I wouldn't say it's high quality as Copic markers. There is a smell. And not a bad smell. The smell is very... It's a marker smell. It's not... And it's stronger than the Copic markers as well. So if you're someone who hates um, solvents or you hate zest it because of that really potent smell, you may not like these markers and I do recommend using um, making sure you have a fan on or a ventilated room. I started getting high using these markers in this demonstration. So that's what I noticed. Um, in my last video I commented on how long this marker is. It's long as a wand. It is ridiculous. Um, but the thing is when you start working with it the marker shortens and becomes almost a normal length marker. So that's a correction there to that. Um, the packaging is used, it uses a material that isn't really durable. You could easily dent this, scratch this, or spill something on it and it would stain. So it is because it is covered in a uncoated material. This product, uh, from looking at the retail cost, it is quite expensive. Now, obviously, the cost that you're paying for is for the technology. The cost should also include a higher quality packaging if you're getting a full set like the one I have. I find that this matte uh, packaging isn't as high quality that the price deems it to be. So that is an unfortunate thing that I'm not happy with. But the product itself, I'm actually quite happy with the product. Um, it is in a very long package and when you use it, it asks you, well, you ideally use it standing up not laying down and I feel like it's so long and a large product like this I'm not going to take traveling so I don't understand why there is a strap I think that a package like this should be dropped down to something more compact something more more like at least half the size and half the length um, 
so something more like square like how my hands are shaped now I think this is way too long the color palette is pretty okay for their first edition um, obviously over time their colors will improve formula will improve and the color palettes will increase as well so I think that what we have so far is pretty good um, in terms of mixed media it can be used with other markers, it can be used with other mediums and for example I have used a metallic watercolour medium and yeah so I really did enjoy this it did take me a lot of it did take me longer to use these markers and you have to understand that it's because you're using the blending chamber when you hold it there for like 5-10 seconds that's added to your colouring time so if you're going to use uh, if you use markers and you're working very quickly uh, this marker type would not be for you if you actually work quick um, for example if you sketch and what uh, this marker is for someone who has the patience and the time to color or do artworks and doesn't mind um, but it is something that amateurs can't pick up very quickly um, you may it may not apply to you but that's why I'm saying that I recommend you guys get a small pack and test it out and have a play Obviously, you don't want to invest into a large kit like I have and not pick it up as quickly. Um, because what you don't want to do is purchase it, start using it, and get frustrated with the type of technology that you're using. Um, but I find these markers very innovative, very nice, uh, really nicely designed, and very innovative how they've um, created it. I think it's very, very interesting, very intriguing, and I think it's a lovely, lovely product, lovely um, innovations um, in the art world. Uh, packaging can improve, and definitely not something that uh, beginners can use. But get a small pack, try it out. If you have any questions on the product that I use in this demonstration, feel free to ask below if I haven't covered anything. Um, I haven't tested whether they are light fast or durable. Uh, that is something that probably isn't the case, uh, that they're light fast or durable. Um, but over time, I'm sure they'll improve the formula for that. So guys, as always, like and subscribe. Just comment below if you have any questions and feedback and subscribe if you are not a subscriber and you want to see coloring videos product demonstrations and anything else that you guys request just comment and ask me so if you guys aren't following me I have all my social medias in the description box below Facebook Twitter LinkedIn and I'm also on patreon so if you guys love my work and like what I do please support me on patreon a little bit of something can always help me create more content for you guys so I hope you guys have enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time bye